Hey YouTube, this is Kevin Bowen of Bowen Small Engine and today I'm working on a 385 XP that has problems that I am very familiar with and I thought I'd share that on YouTube so that if you have these problems you too will be aware of them. Um, this 385 XP was um, provided for me to work on by a feller by the name of Brandon um, I got to be honest, I'm not going to give out the last name, but uh, to make a long story short, this Husqvarna has, although it looks great, been put through hell by the owner that had it. Uh, the piston cylinder, luckily enough, are, are good, but um, the guy that actually had this, he abused it, uh, tore it all to hell, really. Uh, I'll explain this to you. Basically what happens is, is they'll develop a carburetor problem, whether it be a, oh, an example will be for like sawdust that will clog up the, the, the screen on the inside of the carburetor, okay, and people will take the carburetors off and they think that they've fixed their problem. And don't get me wrong, it can be, it can be that way. You can fix the problem by just simply cleaning out the screens and putting the carburetor back on. But what they neglect to understand is, the bolts that actually hold the carburetor on are attached to this flange. And what happens is when they over tighten them, they will get cracks on the flange. And it will cause the uh, chainsaw to actually. Um, well, seep air around this intake boot. Now, the guy that had this was a real genius, okay? He actually put Permatex purposely so he could sell this thing and to screw someone else. He put it on this, uh, this intake pipe. Uh, I just, I can't believe it. I mean, this poor guy is like 800 bucks invested in this chainsaw. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. I thought the same thing. 800 bucks for this thing? That's crazy. Uh, I've seen on eBay, okay, news ones that were actually running. Uh, shoot, they, they went for like six, okay, tops. But the guy actually claims that, you know, his buddy gave 800 bucks for it. So... Be as it may, I just want to show these problems. Basically, when they tightened this up, they tightened it so tight that they actually ripped this intake pipe, as you can see. I mean, that's just terrible. In doing so, they also got the sleeve and deformed it. You can see that sleeve isn't actually a circle anymore. that it's completely just deformed. I did take the liberty of pressure testing the carburetor. I wanted to make sure that if I was to repair this chainsaw that it was actually going to be worth repairing. Unfortunately when I pressure test the carburetor it failed miserably. Um, it was pretty obvious once uh, I got looking at it that uh, someone had pulled the limiter screws and had tried to adjust it in desperation. I don't know whether that be Brandon or his friend, but regardless, um, it really done a number on the carburetor. And it just will not pressure test. And of course, I'm using the EMAC kit and the pressure tester from within it. It's truly a crying shame that uh, this occurs and this actually happens more often than I care to admit. I, I come across these problems. Uh, loggers in desperation will do just about anything. I'm sorry about the video being so shaky uh, to be completely honest with you. Uh, my TV give out inside the building so I'm gonna have to get another TV. Uh, otherwise I'll have to be doing these by hand, so I can assure you that I'm going to get another TV. But basically, if you look closely enough, you will see there's Permatex on this. They done that to keep the uh, the cable in. 
as I said, it's just it's unbelievable what kind of damage occurred to this chainsaw. Um, I can't believe someone would actually be that stupid to, uh, you know, just throw it together like that and and pawn it off on someone without telling them the truth. Um, but that just goes to show, you know, some people will give you a screw in any way they possibly can. I personally, if it was my saw, would take it back to the feller that I got it off of and absolutely demand my money back. Because uh, this is complete BS. Um, a chainsaw that you buy for 800 bucks, if the guy's telling me the truth, uh, should never be in this type of condition, regardless of what the piston and cylinder look like. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I did also pressure test the tank and the line to make sure that the tank vent worked properly, and it does. But as you can see, this this chainsaw was, you know, aesthetically in wonderful shape, but it has those issues. And as I say, that's a very common issue on these. Uh, I would tell you that if you are going to do a repair on this saw, that you would want to put a new clamp on, you would want the new intake pipe, the sleeve, and the flange. I have no idea what these would cost. If I had to guess, I would say the flange is about 12 bucks. The sleeve, um, got you, your flange, your sleeve, probably about two or three dollars. Intake pipe, well at thirty dollars, I can assure you, because I've seen that in the past. And the clamp, probably about six or eight bucks. So just in those parts alone he would have a pretty good chunk of change the carburetor though they are extremely expensive uh, I haven't looked them up but I can assure you that it would probably be over a hundred bucks so it's my opinion at this point that the saw is too expensive to fix um, I personally wouldn't I would take it back to the guy demand my money back and you know go from there because a saw for $800 that don't run is a bunch of BS. Also, they have the wrong spark plug in. I think this is a CJ8. But anyway, like I said, the people that had this, they just they wanted to screw somebody and pawn it off. And I feel sorry for the victim, actually. 